Always good to have our next guest on the show. I can't even call a guest. A friend of the Michael Bay, the show, Dr. Robin L. Smith. How you doing, Dr. Robin? I'm doing well. That's right. I'm not a guest. I'm family. Yeah, you're family. The truth behind great marriages. I, I, we got an emergency. Okay, what is it? We got a boring emergency is what we have going on. Because I, I, I talk to married guys. I've been on the road a lot lately. And when I pull the married guys aside and when I talk to women privately, they love their partners, but they're bored to death. Mm-hmm. People get comfortable once they get the person that they've been, you know, killing themselves to get with. I mean, what are you telling these folks when you talk to them, when you, I don't know if you're treating them or whatever you're calling it, but we're not getting enough passion. People are boring. I'm just telling you, relationships are boring. Yeah, I mean, that's just keeping it real. And people, what is that statement that, you know, all work and no play uh, makes Jack, Jill, and whomever else a dull girl and boy? Well, when we think about how much work, and you're right, all of that energy about how do I capture him how do i capture her how do i get what i want and then you get it and then you neglect it and so it's not just boredom but it's also actually insulting for someone to spend all that time pursuing you and then actually get you and then not take care of you i know let me say this to you george and why i know you guys are married guys yeah. but i need to hear more married dudes telling me how hot their marriage is. Mm-hmm. You know, because when you're talking to single people about marriage, and it's always, hmm, where's my motivation? <laughs> right. Really. Sure. No, that's true. And, I mean, and George, I mean, it's interesting about married people. I mean, what is it and what happens to us when we say I do that makes us decide that somehow I can say now I won't? That's mm-hmm. right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and I, I think it I is do, a thin line. And, and I, what I don't say at the altar is, I just said I do, and I, what I left out is now I'm going to say I won't. Go ahead, George. Yeah, I think especially for men, we it's, it's something about once we, we're conquerors. So after we've, you know, for lack of a better word, conquered that, that woman. I don't know, George. Then, then I think women we, are just as guilty. I'm not saying well, that yeah. to be negative to a woman, but many times women – work out and do their hair and do the whole sexy thing and the minute they get the guy that's true they stop too i think people are equally responsible Absolutely. for being lazy and i think it happens that and and i think there's a certain amount of people who say hey okay i did what i was supposed to do to get you do i have to pursue you our entire life do you're I doggone have to- right and absolutely you are doggone right because it's interesting when you think about what women will do and you're right getting our hair done and taking care of ourselves, you know, wearing something that looks good uh, on the street and also in the bed. And then you see that same person looking like their grandmother mm-hmm. in bed. I mean, wearing, and there's nothing wrong with a flannel nightgown when it's real cold and you don't have any heat. But when you have heat and you're not really thinking about what would make my partner turned on, and see, what happens is there's a lot of acting out. It's like, well, he's not doing this anymore for me. I hear women often talking about all of the burden they feel around the house, around the kids, around homework, so they're too tired. And what they don't realize is that neglecting their partner and actually punishing him is not going to get them what they really want, which is a loyal, loving partner. It's going to get them someone whose eyes start to stray, who sometimes their behavior starts to stray, So we really do have to take responsibility for what do I need to do now that I used to do then when I was behaving like I cared. I just want to see people who are in relationships, because I'm a single guy, but I want to hear people who are in relationships talk about it like it's something you just, I got to have it. Right. Instead of telling me, oh, man, no, but that's a, I love that, Michael, what you're saying. And this is very true. about Many married people. You don't hear them talking about how much they enjoy each other, or what they're talking about enjoying is, well, we went to the movies and went to dinner. You don't really hear them talking about passion. And let's just make it plain so people don't have to wonder what I mean. Talking about good sex. I mean, really good passion. I don't hear those conversations too often from people in relationships. And and to be honest with you, I would really like to. I want to hear good. I don't just want to hear the fact that you love each other. That's that's all good. I want to hear about the, I don't want to hear about you knocking on, I, I mean, I just want to hear the passion when people talk about their relationships. Absolutely. And, and what you're asking is actually a very big question, which is, where did it go? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I know that you used to have it. Right. And then we got married. And so, I mean, when I said I do, and, and this actually happens because people start to slack off and they start to feel comfortable, and comfort can lead to neglect. So we really want to look at 
where did that joy and that passion, and I like the fact that we're not just talking about, I love him, I love, well, we're not just talking about being family. We're talking about where is that animalistic drive that makes me desire, long, crave, and want you. And that is something very important. This is what I want to know, Doc. Where's the pole at? You know, where is the <laughs> where is the sexy lingerie? Where is the whip? I mean, whatever it takes. But you're see, talking see, about Michael, being you're together to, you're forever. Trying to say, you're trying to say this because you're trying to see if I can, if I know what you're talking about. Of course right I know. This is, it is a <laughs> test, see, ladies and gentlemen. Or, see, he's trying to see whether or not I'm, if I'm getting ready to get quiet. Right, right. I don't know what to say. I know what, look. I believe in all of that. I think it is essential inside the context of marriage and committed relationships that those Man, if you're going to be in a committed monogamous relationship, you should be buck wild. Well, be, and let me say why. Because that's what will make you want to come back for more. Not feel like you have a life sentence in prison being married, but actually, you know what? If I could do it again, if I could choose someone else... I would choose her or I would choose him because we didn't, I didn't lose myself. I didn't lose my passion. I gained more. We're doing things now that we didn't do when we were dating. I got to ask this question. What should be off limits for a monogamous couple? You, in terms of sexually? Everything. Everything. I mean, what but, should be off limits? Well, well, look, the Christian folks are listening right now. Good, and I'm glad because you, you all know I'm a Christian. I'm an ordained minister, and, and then people's, I mean, wires really get short. Well, God, dog, and so, let's talk. I mean, because... Well, and, we need to talk, and we need to talk about this, and the church is really, it's failing. We are failing ourselves by not having these conversations inside the house, meaning the worship house. But what's off limits really has to do with... The two people. The individuals. Yeah. The in, so, you know, and, and I'm going to, you know, I don't know what you're going to have to edit and bleep out, so I'm just going to say just it. Say and, it. You, and you do what you got sure. to do with what I'm getting ready to say. <laughs> but when we're talking about oral sex, when we're talking about, so I mean, just going to make it plain, when we're talking about how people share their body in an intimate way, we're, so not just you know, the, the missionary position of intercourse, that's, okay, that's one way, but there are lots of ways, and not only that, where you have sex, I mean, is it only the bed? What about your kitchen? I mean... Yeah, why what, is it always so, the lights out under the blanket, yeah. a boring... What about the backyard? Right, I mean, just, okay, so you said, wait a minute, are you going to, you're going to share a little more today, so... Yeah. yeah so the, but it is true, so why would we make something off limits if both people are saying this is something that brings us pleasure. But there's so many taboos. We're so scared. Yep. Yeah. We're so afraid. Like, what does that mean about me? What does that mean about her or him? Wait a minute. Yeah. I got to say this, Doc, before we finish the interview. People are concerned about their partner's insecurity as well. That's right. So say more. What, what do you mean by that? They're worried that if, if oh, come on, I'm glad you asked. Because I know you if are. the woman, especially the woman, she's really concerned. If the woman allows herself to become too freaky, uh -huh. then a man is going to wonder, where did you learn that from? And where did you get that yeah. from? I and mean, vice versa, too. But more so with the woman, though, George. It's a double standard. A guy can be as wild as he wants. He's not going to be judged nearly as much as the woman is. Well, you know, it's interesting. When you talk, even use the word freaky, what is the beginning of that word, free? Free. Hmm. So maybe we want to start talking about what we're really looking to be in committed, monogamous, loving relationships is free and free to be who we really are. Free. You know, the issue of fantasy is such an important thing. Why would you want to keep your fantasy Shoot. Doc, from your Doc, partner? Right. That's part Stop of what out. will bring the spice. What did I just say the about the insecurity on the part of a lot of guys? And, and fellas, if it's not you, I'm not talking about but you, but you know. That if a woman comes out and starts talking about, even if she doesn't want to do it, but she just wants to share her fantasy with her man, if it's the fantasy that, that brings on his insecurity, she's got a problem. Yeah. Well, she may have a problem, but I'll tell you this. If she keeps it to herself, she'll keep her and husband. she is a deadhead <laughs> and boring, she's going to have another problem. And so we really have to talk about... Just because I have a fantasy about something doesn't mean I did it. But and right. just, uh, let me just say this. This conversation yeah. we're having right now, yeah. you know what? It's going to make people think, hmm, maybe I can go tell him. Maybe I can let him know. I don't know, that I saw it. Well, Yeah, I, I think know. so. Maybe. I don't, know. I don't know. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for coming on with us and talking about it's it. It's always my honor. Take, Take care. care. Boy, I tell you, she really opened up the can of worms, didn't she? Yes, she did.